It's Saturday. Today I'm going to show you how to season a carbon steel pan. Specifically, the mat for Bourget. Now, there's a lot of misinformation out there about how to season a carbon steel or black steel pan. Some people tell you to put it on the stovetop. Others tell you to put it into the oven. Well, that may work for some models. For the mat fur, we need to use a very different method. So today I'm going to show you the correct way to season a carbon steel pan. Now you may notice that on my pan it's already dark. That's because I've already gone through this process once, I've been cooking with the pan for months, and it's worked up a good seasoning. When you get the pan right out of the box, it's going to be shiny silver. What you're asked to do is clean it with a mild detergent um, and a scrub brush. Now, it may take a lot of time to get the wax coating on the pan off so that you can begin the seasoning process. It's shipped with that coating so it doesn't rust in transit. Now, some people have a lot of trouble getting it off because it's actually on there real good, especially for this model pan. So, one tip I found that not a lot of people know about is using rubbing alcohol. If you pour rubbing alcohol on the pan, let it sit for a while, then scrub it down. You can even use a harder scrubber like steel wool. It's okay because there's no seasoning on the pan yet. We're going to build up that seasoning later. And then once you're working it off, you should see that wax start coming off in like little dark flakes. Hi, Emma. Now, one, once the wax is completely off the front and the back, then you can begin the seasoning process. And I'll go over what that entails right now. What you'll need to begin seasoning the pan is the skins of two medium-sized potatoes, two-thirds cup of coarse kosher salt, and you really want to make sure you have the, cor the coarsest kosher salt possible um, to really work the seasoning in. Otherwise, um, you won't be able to build up that nice non-stick surface that you'll expect from your carbon steel pan. And finally, a third of a cup of oil. I use canola oil. I've seen that some people have trouble with other types of oil, like peanut oil, safflower oil. Um, so I really recommend canola oil, but um, you can use one of those other oils, just not something with a low smoke point like olive oil um, or butter. So the process here is quite simple. We're gonna heat up the, the we're gonna heat up the pan to medium heat. Then throw in our oil. Our salt. And the potato skins. And then push it around with a wooden or metal spoon. This is going to heat up over time so you don't want to use plastic or else you risk it melting into the pot. I'm going to stir this all up until it's combined real nice. All right we're about 10 minutes in here and you can see that everything's already starting to brown up nicely and I've been stirring this constantly. You don't want to you know walk away even for two minutes. You need to keep moving it around. Okay, we're at the full 15 minutes and you can see that the potato skins are black, very crispy, the salt's very dark, and it's smoking a lot. You wanna make sure you take your smoke detectors out before doing this, because they'll definitely go off. So now that we've reached our 15 minutes, the pan's looking nice and dark all around. We'll turn the heat off, let it cool, Throw, uh, throw this stuff out. You definitely don't want to eat it. And then uh, wipe it down, see how the seasoning looks. All right, so this is what it looks like after the first process of seasoning. Uh, mine was already dark already, but you can see, if you look sort of here by the back of the pan, uh, I accidentally cooked some tomatoes in here once, which you definitely don't want to do. It'll strip the seasoning right off. 
um, and it actually did the back of my pan. But here you can see it's already turning a light brown again, right there. Just from one seasoning, one pass through. Now it's recommended to do two, so now that the pan's cooled down, I wiped out all of the salt and burnt potato skins from the first time. We're gonna do the same exact thing over again. And there it is, right after the second seasoning. If we take a closer look at our problem area here, you could see that it is slightly light brown, a little bit more brown around that rough area. And uh, as we continue to cook with it, it'll get darker and darker until it's pitch black. Just uh, don't cook any tomatoes in it or else you'll have to do this all over again. All right, here's the deal with our pan now that we have it seasoned. You're gonna be tempted to throw a couple eggs in there, slide them around, get them moving, enjoy that nonstick quality, but don't, okay? It is not recommended by the manufacturer and you're gonna have a bad time if you do it because it takes time for the nonstick qualities to really build up and be effective enough to fry an egg um, and not have it stick. Now, what I recommend doing is cooking, you know, a couple things in there, maybe like cook like three or four different things at di different levels of heat. Um, what I do every time after I season or reseason my pan, I take the potatoes I just peeled, cut them up, and fry up some potatoes. That's a great first dish to make. So go ahead. Hi, Emma. Go ahead and do that and uh, make a few other meals in there. Uh, whatever you usually do, this is a great pan that could be used for anything before you try to fry some eggs in it. Um, but once you build up that seasoning after a couple cooks, it is going to be perfect for eggs. This is, uh, actually the, the, you know, ultimate egg pan. Uh, it's what I use mine for the majority of the time. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is since I have my seasoning built up a couple times, I'm going to show you, uh, how an egg, uh, fares in this pan because it really is excellent for cooking eggs on a daily basis. Once you have your pan seasoned and you've tried it out a few times, you're ready to cook eggs. Now I'm gonna show you how that process goes. I got the pan preheating over a uh, little lower than medium heat. And once it gets warm enough, I'll throw some butter in there or whatever fat you prefer. And now you want to give it a couple seconds for that white to set up before you start messing with it. But as soon as the bottom gets uh, solid, you should be able to slide that thing around no problem. Just like that. A little soon, but you can see, even before the bottom sets up, it's already moving around the pan. No problem. That's exactly how your carbon steel pan should cook an egg when it's well seasoned. Look at that, no problem at all.
And there you have it. Our carbon steel pan is now perfectly seasoned and as you can see, non-stick. Uh, or in my case, re-seasoned. Now the seasoning method is not some kind of mystery or secret I have in my back pocket. It's actually the manufacturer's recommended process for seasoning this pan. And it can work for other pans as well, but if you have a Matt Fur Bourget pan, you definitely want to season it using potato skins, salt, and oil, and not in the oven or on the stove top. You're only gonna end up potentially encounter, encountering problems using other methods. And this method is perfectly sound. If you like this video, you found it helpful, please let me know. Uh, if you are curious about how to clean the pan, how to maintain it, um, just ask. And uh, maybe I'll do a video doing that, showing you how to do that the correct way. Because there's a lot of ways, a lot of information out there about how to clean a carbon steel pan. Um, but a lot of them can actually get your pan gunked up. If you're curious about how to clean the pan, let me know in the comments below. And I'll, I'll make a video showing you how to clean the carbon steel pan the correct way. Not just anyway. Alright, let's do some cooking. Mm -hmm.